The Order of Light presents My First Contact, a new series which allows you, the subscribers and viewers, to share your first contact. What was that experience that opened your eyes to everything? You will be hearing stories coming from all around the world. I believe that first contact experience is the most revealing when our eyes become open to a reality that has been unknown. So join us as we talk about UFOs, spiritual dimensional beings, paranormal and ghost stories, and near-death experiences. Let's make contact. Hello, my name is Nicole Aubrey, and I've been having uh, supernatural paranormal experiences my entire life. Um, and just recently, in August of 2022, I started having uh, ET experiences uh, where my consciousness was taken. Um, uh, taken sounds so horrible. I, I had actually been asking for this. I did a series of meditations and they worked. So uh, yeah, I'll just tell you a few stories from my childhood um, and then I'll get to the ET ones later. But yeah, when I was uh, a child, I my parents live in this old uh, schoolhouse. It was an old Catholic schoolhouse. Um, and I remember sitting at the kitchen table. Uh, my mom was in the kitchen with me and there's a big window uh, in the front of the house, like right before you get to the front door. So if anyone comes, you have to uh, walk past this window. And I remember uh, sitting at the table, I looked up through the window and I said, oh, mom, dad's home. Uh, this would have been in like, the 1990s um, I was just a small child and my mom looked at the window and she like froze <laughs> and uh, she uh, I remember the figure or whatever turned around and he had the white uh, like like a priest and my mom um, froze and she she ran to the door and she looked out and he had disappeared and she told me later she said yeah she's like he was transparent <laughs> like you could see right through him um yeah so there's that one and then there was another time when i had a friend over and uh we were just going to bed uh, i was in my bed she was on a mattress on the floor and um my door was open and uh it was winter so the wood stove was on so there was light coming in uh, my room from the wood stove and uh, i remember I was in my bed and I look up into the corner of my room and I saw this black uh, cloud like it was like a misty black cloud and I was just like staring at it for a while I couldn't really make sense of it I didn't know what it was so I said to my friend Emily I said Emily I said what is that and she looks up at it and is like terrified so she crawls she gets on my bed like under my blankets and we just put the blankets over um, our heads and went to bed yeah and then there was uh another cloud like experience this is probably in 2016 um i was living with my parents i was in between places um i was in my 20s and I was in uh, in my bedroom and I was just watching, I had my laptop, uh, I was lying in bed, had my laptop on me, I was watching a documentary and um, my door was open and you can see into the kitchen uh, from my room, from where I was and uh, my parents have like 13 foot high ceilings in the kitchen and I was home alone and I remember something caught my eye and I looked into the kitchen and I saw this white cloud like it was misty but it had like straight edges here but then the sides were just all misty um and that freaked me out <laughs> that was uh that was it was about 10 foot like high like their ceilings are 13 this was at about 10 feet and um i remember the logical side of my brain was like oh my god like is, is mom home uh was she smoking even though like that doesn't even make sense because smoke like dissipates the higher it gets up um 
I was just like running through all these things in my brain trying to make sense of it and yeah it really freaked me out so I just went back to watching my documentary uh, now though like I had my spiritual awakening in 2019 and I wish it would happen now because I would grab my phone and I'd go out and I'd talk to it and I'd be like who are you and I'd film it and but I didn't back then because I was just too freaked out yeah so anyways, um, so these ET experiences started uh, in August of 2022. And again, this, uh, these are happening in Douglas, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, so I'll, I just got to give you a little bit of a backstory. So I've been having neurological problems for about five years, just dizziness and uh, doctors can't figure it out. I've seen over 26 different doctors. They have no idea. Anyway. So I went to um, a psychic fair and I remember sitting down with this psychic and she uh, didn't know anything about, I didn't tell her anything about my health. I just literally just told her my name. I sat down, she started giving me a reading. Everything was like bang on, like everything she was saying. And then she stopped and she looked over my right shoulder and she said, oh, she said, the Palladians are working on your brain. Okay, instantly, uh, like my eyes just filled with tears. I was so overwhelmed with this feeling of love. Like it was crazy. Like, <laughs> oh my God. So I knew that it had to be right um, just because the feeling and the visceral reaction that I had. Anyway, so she recommended that I get this book called The Palladian uh, Workbook, uh, Awakening Your Divine, Divine Ka. Um, by Amora Kuan Yin and so at every chapter there is a meditation so I uh, it started reading it and every night I would voice record the meditation on my phone and then put my headphones on and I'd listen to it the meditation and I got to this one um, it's the dolphin um, a dolphin meditation here so the meditation is the dolphin brain repatterning one and uh, so I did that I fell asleep and um, I woke up and I had all this pressure in my ear like it felt like a cone was being like inserted into my ear it was really weird it didn't hurt it was just like really a lot of pressure it felt very strange and then my body was like being moved around on my bed like in different positions and uh, I remember I could sense that there were beings there was a man and a woman a Palladian on my on my left side and then a man on my right and then a Syrian at the end of my bed and uh, I remember thinking like this is so cool like I I didn't feel like it was in my body but I was like aware of everything going on and at one point I had reached out my hand and I had grabbed the, the female Palladian's hand and I felt it and I was like, like it felt real, like a real hand. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And then I had to let go because they kept uh, moving me around <laughs> again. And then I'm like, I'm gonna do that again. So I did it and I grabbed her hand again. Um, and yeah, it was really cool and then and then the Syrian, like I was kind of like a starfish on the bed and my legs were spread and he pulled something through me and um, it just triggered all kinds of like past life and ancestral like uh, sexual trauma stuff. And I got mad because <laughs> I just, I wasn't prepared for it. And so I, I did like, I, I said, why did you do that for her? Like, why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you tell me? Um, and then I woke up in my body in my bed and it was so strange because I thought for sure I was still lying on my back but uh, as soon as I started coming to you know it takes you a while to get your senses all back together and um, I woke up and I was on my side and I had left my window open that night and my room was very cool I also have a fan <laughs> about like three feet from my face that I sleep with and uh, so my room was very cold, but when I woke up, I was drenched in sweat. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, I've had a couple of those. Uh, another one here, um, just quickly, uh, I was pulled from my body and I like came to and I was on like a ship and there was a, a round room 
um, and it was full of beings, all kinds of different beings. And then there was in the middle, there was like a white circle, like platform, and it was glowing from the bottom. And there was a Palladian man there. And I was like, was, like my consciousness was there a little bit. I was like fully aware of my body on my bed with my cat, you know, like, but I was there, like I was there. And I was thinking like, I don't know if I'm, I should be here. Like, what is this? But anyway, the Palladian man in the center was uh, giving a speech. And I was trying to listen, but there were beings like chattering beside me. Um, but I did catch, he said, uh, we did it. Earth made it through the portal. Okay. And this was October of 2022. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm hoping somebody can like, did something happen? I don't know. Um, yeah. And then instantly I was in a room i was on a bed and there was a palladian man and a woman beside me i could sense them and then another woman came into the room and she said uh okay we're going to move you now and so i said in you know in my head i said well where are you moving me like where are you taking me and then the palladian man and woman like grabbed my hand and like we're touching my hand and then i ended up like grabbing one of their fingers and like just holding it and then uh yeah and then i was back in my body and i woke up in my bed yeah so it was a couple other things but those are uh those i think are the best most interesting ones um so yes thank you very much uh, bye hello i'm Steffi, I'm from Germany, and I want to share my first um, ET contact experience that I had in 2020. And I want to share a negative and also positive one, because the positive also happened after the negative one. So I had my awakening in 2020, beginning of 2020. So I started to do my research, and I also went very fast in the exopolitics topics. So in June, I started to do meditation. And then I was, it was um, beginning of July, I was at my parents' house. And I'm, I remember it was a Friday and I went into the cellar and I felt already a very, very low vibration in the cellar. But I did not know why I was feeling that or like who is there. So I did not really understand why I was feeling that low vibration. And then it was then at the evening I started to do meditation and I suddenly in front of me it was in black and white I saw like a wall in front of me and there were and there were really like some long slim fingers that if someone was hiding behind the wall and I suddenly I saw a gray in front of me and I knew that this gray was not a good one that was in front of me but I also was not scared of him or something so um Suddenly I saw a script. It was actually very fast. I suddenly saw a script in front of me. It was coming to me. Uh, I, I think it was maybe the script from the grace. And this script was sent with energy, like electric energy. And this electric energy went into my third eye and into my body. So that gray attacked me actually um, energetically. And then afterwards, so I did not really understand what it was or why he attacked me. So I had the feeling that that I had to go out to the balcony. So I went out to the balcony and I suddenly I saw in the sky a very, very huge round light, like with uh, red and orange and yellow colors. And it was very huge and it was like hovering and rotating around and like moving like this and rotating. So I, I saw that and I thought that, oh, that's a little bit weird in the sky. That's probably not a normal star, what I'm seeing. But then I thought that I'm, I'm checking that star app. So I looked at this um, Starwalk app that I had and then it said um, Arcturus. But then I thought like, no, that's, that's not a planet. Planets are not like moving around from the right to the left a little bit and rotating. But I was lo looking at that very, very large light, uh, all round light in the skies that I saw. And I actually start focusing. And when I had like eye contact, suddenly I received like energy from that uh, light, from that round light in the sky. It was also a little bit electric. 
and it went through my third eye and also into my body as well. But I actually had a good feeling when I received that, a positive one. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, as I also did not really understand. Um, and then, of course, later on, uh, I knew that it was actually UFO <laughs> in the sky that I uh, got to know that, that it's actually UFO. So the next day, I um, it was around 11.45 p.m., that I suddenly felt a very, very low vibration in the room. I was still awake. Um, so um, this low vibration got very intense. And um, also my parents, they have, they have like a wooden ceiling and this wooden ceiling was cracking around like in a scary movie or something. But I actually was not scared when I was feeling that low energy. That low energy was very sick. And it was not the air was filled with that energy. That I was also attacked by that energy. And um, uh, But, um, you know, I had the feeling that they want to look for fear or want to suck out your fear energy or something like that. But um, I still wasn't scared. I was very calm and... You know, and I was like sitting there and listening to what may happen next. So I suddenly heard like some footsteps, like someone was landing on the ground. Like, and it was in the other room. And then I heard that someone was um, like sneaking around in the other room, that, that I heard some footsteps. And I suddenly I heard in my head, I heard another voice in my head that said, um, Zedakwe but a very high voice. And it was really like Zetakwe, Zetakwe in my head. And uh, I, uh, of course, understood that this uh, gray in front of me was a Zetakwe and he was now in my mind. So, um, so I did not know uh, how to get rid of him or what I should do. So I started to think of my soul group. So I closed my eyes and was thinking of my soul group and my galactic brothers and sisters, if they could help me with that. And afterwards, when I said that, um, suddenly I felt a very, very high energy that was coming in. And suddenly the gray was out of my mind again. And also my mind was feeling very, very positive. Be, uh, because I almost got a headache when the gray was in my mind, actually. And so this high energy, it came in and, and it kind of was like it was washing away this low energy in the house. And then afterwards, I didn't got no issues anymore at, the, at my parents' house. So everything was fine. So when I was at my home, I was thinking about that um, experience and I thought I have to maybe call someone or talk about with someone. So the only person I think was to, that I thought that I'm calling like an old friend from school. So I, uh, I um, called her, but when I told her that, that she was, I think she was more freaking out like me and scared. Uh, even if she didn't have that experience and said like, uh, what did you do and how did you, did you get yourself into it and should be cautious or these ETs are, are all bad upstairs. And uh, of course I knew that it was a, not a good one, but I was not really scared at all from that gray. But I also um, told her about, um, it was uh, before that gray attack actually, there was also an there was also a man a couple of times popping up in front of my mind during meditation. So I told her about that, but she was then also like, "Oh no, they were all scared. Uh, they were all like bad upstairs and everything, and like all ETs and demons." I think she said, "I don't remember anymore." So um, yeah, but um, uh, so I after. After the call, then um, I kind of was thinking around what you said, but then suddenly I heard like a um, sound in my uh, bedroom or in my apartment. 
and it was more like a rustle sound and uh, suddenly I felt a presence that someone was there but a positive one in my house and so I was walking around first and I asked like who is there but um, I didn't get a response or something so uh, I went into my bedroom again and I sat there and I suddenly when I was I was looking at the closet and they and, and I suddenly saw like for a couple of seconds I saw um, a, like a silhouette like a structure or silhouette of a very tall man that was standing actually in front of my bed and I recognized him that was that man that uh, that I was seeing actually uh, or uh, that I had seen a couple of times in front of my meditations and that after a couple of seconds suddenly I felt that he was sitting right in front of me actually and I closed my eyes and I had then uh, I saw at his yellow like a yellow light hand like in front of me and he kind of um, had his put his hand over my um, hair and everything and I opened up my eyes again and I knew that he was sitting in front of me so I closed my eyes again and I suddenly I felt like a tear was running down through my face. Um, and after that, I kind of understood that he felt a little bit sad um, that I should not think that everyone is bad upstairs and demons like that and something like that. And um, it was then a little bit, I was then, I sat around a little bit and thinking and suddenly I had a telepathic contact. I, I heard suddenly another voice in my head and it was him. And I started to do, um, I started then talk with him in the evening a little bit. I had then my first telepathic contact with him. And I remember when he left the room, actually, I saw his golden silhouette, like golden light silhouette of him, of his body, actually, when he left the room. <clears throat> so then afterwards, I got more contact with him and got to know where he is and who he is and where he comes from. I also got contact with my soul group from the Arcturo star system, or it's called Aurora. That's what they told me, that I'm that I'm Ohorai from the Ohorai way, it's from the Ohora system. That's what my soul group told me. And I also got to know some other people as well, um, from him as well. So I actually thought I wanted to share some information about him and where he comes from. So his name is Arian, um, he's my twin flame. And he comes from the Pleiadian Targeta system and he comes from the planet Ta. As a PT, a PT AAH, that's the name of the planet. And they also call themselves Ta, like that. It's like the name of their community. I call it like that. Um, the Ta are very tall and slim. Slim. They are 6.7, 6.8 tall. They all have like light blonde, long, straight hair and very fair skin and high cheekbones and they have larger eyes than we we have and um, the men have blue eyes like an aquamarine and the um, women have uh, very light green eyes the ta they are wearing generally um, white clothes like white suits and um, then they also wearing like a traditional clothing like a long white robe and they have like a rectangular um, collar with a silvery edge. And in the middle, they have like a, a round metal. It's, it's like hanging here and it's made of metal round and it's, and it's where the heart is, you know, where the heart chakra is. Uh, it looks like a little bit gold, but a little bit darker than gold. And um, yeah, so uh, his name is Arian, and I also got aware of his father and mother. His father is a higher commander. His um, his name is Ranu, and he's like the higher commander of the Ptah fleet upstairs. And um, and his mother name is Leila, and I know also another one. His name is Edoran. He's a friend of him. And so these um, people that I'm in contact with, then I found out a little bit later that it was my family before I 
before I incarnated here on this planet. Yeah, um, so that was a little bit uh, what I wanted to share a little bit of my experience and a little bit information about me. And thank you that uh, you have watched and listened to it. And uh, yes, have a nice day. Good morning, Robert and friends. My name is Cheryl. I'm from Maryland. I'm 58 years old. And I have had several experiences, unusual experiences, uh, clustered together though. Um, I hadn't had recall on anything. I, I used to have dreams as a child where I would astro project and come out of my body. And I can explain that all to you. Um, but I didn't think about that for many, many, many years. And then I think it was around 92 or 93, I had a profound experience. I was driving right down here in Westminster towards Main Street and there's like a little hill. And I looked up, it was a gray day, I looked up and basically it appeared that time stood still and the clouds opened up and I could see this enormous elliptical disc just hanging there over my head and when I mean enormous I mean it took up the entire sky and um, it was a uh, dull metal gray color uh, seamless and very slim and I'm thinking that it had a little bit more of a bottom bump out to it than the top but it was very, very slim. And um, it was hang th hanging there for just a few seconds. And then from what I can tell, after thinking about it, when it realized it was decloaked and at least I could see it, um, it kicked on the afterburners. Um, it went from very dull to a extreme white bright light blinding and it took off in the direction it came from perhaps and it was like three seconds or not even that and it was gone so ever since that experience and then i had a couple more it was like a cluster um i had one Looks like I have it written down uh, in uh, 96. I had another. Um, then I had another in 2011, but that was more recent. Um, but after that, one big experience, I started researching everything I could on UFOs. And at the time, 90s, as you all probably know, it was very difficult to find. Uh, I was traveling around the South and I would go to all these little libraries try to find whatever books that I could and read up on it. And in the meantime, I started having recalls of the dreams when I was very young, maybe, maybe started as early as five years old, maybe seven up till about 10 or 11. So it was a re repetitive dream. So the dream was that I was sleeping um, my I guess astral body rose up to the ceiling in my bedroom and it floated down the hall. We had a very small house out into the living room, um, would float through the front window, which was a large panel window. Then it would, my body would basically, you know, float around on the outside, you know, at night. And it would fly around um, this small wood uh, craft that looked like a Vimana, almost like a little rocket, like a Vimana shape. And then um, I also would enter a small craft that looked like it was designed for me to um, ride on. So um, you basically walked into the back of it, right into the back of it, and it was kind of round. It was like a hovercraft. And I knew exactly how to fly it. And I would get on it, and it would fly up, and I could fly all around the neighborhood. 
you know, look at everything, and then I could fly it back, you know, land it in my yard, um, you know, and get out, and then after that, the dreams basically stop, you know, end at that point. But I had that dream, um, or those types of dreams, repetitively for a long time. And I didn't have recall of those until, or real recall of those until this experience when I saw, you know, the huge elliptical gray spacecraft. Um, and I've had a lot of time to think about who they were. Um, I mean, I can, that's for another time. But I just want to tell you really quickly that also in 96, I had a really interesting experience up in Western Maryland, up in Oakland, Maryland. There was a, a, a fest, fall fest going on October 13th, 1996. I have it written down in a journal. And um, I described seeing the craft. It was at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, and it um, appeared that I thought initially they were balloons, but um, maybe they came closer or I had more insight. Once again, it felt like time stood still. I looked around me and it seemed like nobody else could see it. I could see it clearly. But it was um, one, uh, a donut-shaped vehicle, small, with a hole, it had a hole in the middle, dull metal gray, and it was just gyrating, and I thought it was going to crash. And then I looked to the left, and I saw um, a larger diamond-shaped craft, looked like it was pursuing it. I didn't know at first, after thinking about it, it I think it was pursuing it. Um, it was, um, uh, tetrahedron shaped and it was tumbling nose over nose and one side of it was bright red and one side of it was bright white, but it was, um, I could see the outline, you know, like the outline, but it was clear. It was translucent and, um, it looks like I said that it was a five minute sighting, five minute sighting. So that's that one. And I'm pretty much going to stop there um, because I think that's probably about 10 minutes. And that's the bulk of it. I've had one other sighting um, when I was in the hospital. And uh, I can tell you about that later. But um I will tell you what I thought was happening on that day, October 13, 1996, after having many years to think about it. It seemed to me that the diamond craft was pursuing the small donut craft. Um, and I don't know if the small donut craft was a military craft. I was thinking they were lower level grays and that the diamond shaped, um, whoever was in the diamond shaped um, craft obviously they were a higher technology and um, more ethereal and I think they were trying to beat down those other guys that's the only thing that I can think or get them under control somehow so anyway Robert that's basically it Robert and friends and I hope you enjoyed hearing my story um, and we can talk later Thank you so much. Hi, Have a everybody. great day. Um, my name is Lorena Quigley, and I wanted to share an experience that, um, well, actually, it's two experiences, but they're tied in together at the same place. And what happened was I was taking a psychic development class in New York City. This was in Manhattan, in Midtown, in uh, 2003. And this was a beginning psychic development class. I had never done a psychic development class before, so it was very new to me doing all this stuff very new um, so what happened um, so we had a full-on seance this is the second class and we had a full-on seance and what they did was they turned out the lights the teacher turned out the lights they did we we're sitting in a circle uh, the teacher said a prayer of protection we did a med guided meditation and then um, and then called in the spirits to come visit us like loved ones who are on the other side so what happened was uh, 
uh, you could definitely kind of see little lights and energy around the room. It was a very dark room. And um, sometimes you could feel like a tingling, touching, something on your arm, things like that. Um, and people uh, gave messages. Some people were very psychic. Some people had done this kind of stuff before, but I hadn't. This is totally new to me. Um, towards the end of the circle, this um, I saw this woman, this spirit, actually come into the circle. Now this, it looked like a ghost. It looked totally like what you would think a ghost would look like, but and it was a woman. And it, like, kind of full size, goes to the human size, I mean. And it walked into the room, into the circle. The spirit stopped right in front of me, stopped, uh, put, and put her head in my lap and started crying. And started giving, and I got information also while she was doing this that she was the mother of one of the two women who were sitting next to me. I wasn't sure which one it was. And, uh, and I, I was surprised and kind of shocked that I could even see this. And I'd never seen anything like that before. And, um, and that I had gotten information, just I, could, I knew what she was communicating to me. And so I very meekly said, I have a message to give to somebody. And, um, and I said, and it's for one of these two women right here. And it was the second woman next to me. <clears throat> and she instantly started crying. She knew it was her mother. I gave the message, I don't remember what it was, but um, uh, that was a pretty amazing experience. Um, I had never, again, never done anything like that, never had seen anything like that, but I was like, oh yeah, this is amazing, I'm doing more of this. And I wasn't afraid, I was surprised and, and amazed. So I kept going. Anyway, so this class, I went into the advanced level of this class, and so at the advanced class one night, and we meditated a lot together, there were no new students in the class, it was all the same people, so we all really felt comfortable with each other and trusted each other. And so one of the classes we were meditating, we were doing a silent meditation where we just close our eyes and meditate in the dark again. And um, uh, in this particular this particular night, what I saw was, I literally saw, and my eyes were open, by the way. The other experience and this experience, my eyes were open. This was not in my mind's eye. This was like I am seeing it in front of me. So what I saw was, um, as I open, I open my eyes on and off throughout the thing, throughout the meditation. Anyway, so what I saw across the other side of the room, and again, we were sitting in a circle. I saw this level literally open up, like a big, <laughs> open up, and I saw five beings walk out from this level. Now, these beings were, um, there were five of them, and they were 10 to 12 feet tall, so they were really quite large. They looked like a oval, oval-shaped orbs of light, and this is, I drew a picture of it, and this is what it looked like. So, um, you can see this, so, but the, these, the lights extended up past what this picture portrays on, on, on both sides. So it was like these, almost like a cross. And in the center, well, above the center, kind of like what would be the, the, what we would call the heart space, there was this light inside of there. And it was goldeny, silver, white. And this was, um, and this was transparent. Anyway, so this is what I saw. That was pretty wild. Anyway, so I'm watching these beings and they walk over. They walk over and they go to this guy who's sitting kind of off in the distance. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so they walk straight up to him and he completely disappears. They walked in front of him and then he disappears. The chair moved back about two feet and he's gone. Now, my feeling is, is that nobody else in the class can see that. Now, I don't know if it's true. I was too freaked out to, to ask anybody or, uh, or even to see what happened. Anyway, so he disappears, and I was freaked out. Okay, this is, the weird thing is, is that after that, I really don't remember anything 
And the next thing I remember is it's the end of circle and the guy's sitting back in his chair. It's back in place and, um, and we're closing up circle. So I don't know what happened between uh, when he disappeared and the end of circle. And um, uh, I did, at, after we closed the class, I told my teacher about what I had seen and he didn't know what to tell me, <laughs> actually, because uh, I don't think he'd ever seen anything like that either. Um, and this is a guy who's been teaching uh, mediumship and uh, uh, psychic development for years and years and years. Um, anyway, so, uh, so I have missing time, so I don't know what happened. And also, um, I've seen something, I've only seen this once in my life, and this was this experience. So if anybody has ever seen anything like this, I'd love to hear about it. Um, anyway, that's it. That's my experience. I um, hope you enjoy my story. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Tyler Koala from St. Louis, Missouri, and I just wanted to share my first ET encounter, physical encounter that I've ever had. It only occurred a few months ago in Orlando, Florida at a conference I was at. Uh, it was broad daylight, I was outside, and I seen a figure standing there. I wasn't sure if it was real or not. It had a cowboy hat on, a long red beard, very tall, and what looked to be like a Hawaiian shirt. And I couldn't make out if it was real or not. Then it turned around and looked at me, and it was the most hideous thing I have ever seen, and I'm still recovering today. I blacked out after that, and I don't know what happened. Thank you, Robert, for the opportunity to share my experience. I'm April Harp. I had a, perhaps a, I don't know, we called it a monster or a demon growing up when I was maybe two and a half. I was in bed in my room by myself and I remember I had a yellow nightgown and like a sheet on my bed and something told me to look up at the apartment window and we lived on the little Miami River in the basement apartment and I looked up at the window like this and you know kind of because it was above my head and um, I seen red eyes and this shaggy silhouette and it seemed like it was illuminated as if there were like street lights outside or something, but there wasn't. We lived in a basement apartment on a river in a small town. Um, so um, it was pretty creepy. And I remember pulling the covers over my head and being just terrified, but then never. I remember when I woke up the next morning, I was in my floor. And that's the first time I had any kind of interaction with a being outside of this world. And although I was very young, I remember everything about it, including the feelings. I can re-feel the situation every time I think about it. Thanks for your time. Hi there. I'm Gabrielle. I'm living in Germany, close to Frankfurt. And my first contact was, was telepathically. So I'm a trained medium in English tradition and a QHHT practitioner. That's a good basis to handle all this stuff. And as a medium, I am giving public demonstrations of mediumship, giving messages to public. And on one of these evenings, it was uh, 
autumn 2018, I got a message for a man in the public. And this man was sitting there with arms crossed, like in resistance. And I thought, oh my God, somebody sent him here, his wife, and he doesn't really want to be here. That's what little me, the ego, thinks. And when I tapped into his field, I immediately got an image. I saw the pyramids in Giza and they were glowing like lamps from the inside out with white light. And right beside them stood two figures that looked alien. The typical grey type alien um, with the big head and the big eyes and the slim slender body. And they were wearing uh, some kind of overall in white or silver, some light color, very, very light and bright. And they told me their name and they told me uh, what kind of message they want me to deliver to this man. And I thought by myself, oh my God, how can I talk about this publicly? Um, all the others um, to whom this message is not meant will think I'm nuts. Okay, the programming, here we have it again. I started very cautiously and asked the man, well, are you interested in any way in Egypt, the pyra pyramids? Maybe you're thinking about making a journey to visit the pyramids. And that guy, without any motion and without moving his crossed arms, answered, I'm an engineer and I'm interested in ancient technology. So, whoosh, this opened the door like a floodgate and I had to deliver the message. And after I delivered it, he only said, Chaka, that was what I was waiting for. And I thought with my little ego all the time, how can I talk about this and aliens? And after that evening, I went home at 12 o'clock midnight and started researching because I have never heard about the Ebens. That was the name they gave me. And um, well, that started uh, one of the rabbit holes. I had in the background of my head, uh, yes, there are UFOs and other races and species and aliens, uh, etc. But um, I never went down that road very far. But after this um, telepathic um, meeting and contact, I wanted to know more. And I found out everything uh, what I could. I even found some pictures and drawings from other people about the Ebens and it was exactly matched exactly my experience. They look like a type of grey but they have a much more friendlier face. And even though I'm trained as a medium, if you can't verify the sender of a message, that's why English tradition sticks to uh, the deceased. Your mom and dad or grandpa and grandma, they're bond with you by the bonds of love and they won't harm you. But any other spirit can disguise himself as an angel, as your grandpa or whatever. So how can you find out who's really on the other end of the line? They show you pictures, they give you details that you can verify with the person you give the message to because they can um, know how grandma looks and if you describe the right features so you have a match and you know you're on the right track. So if you can't verify the sender then you got to check the energy of the message. Is it positive, uplifting, something enthusiastic uh, which will bring benefit to the person? And you can see from the reaction of the one who gets the message if it's working, touching the heart or the soul. And um, I checked the energy and it felt good and positive and I had no means to think they are bad greys, the bad aliens. So... Um, after that, 
During the last two years, 21 and 22, I got several real sightings in the sky. The first were like in the protocol of the good ones, <laughs> the, the well-meaning ones of the ETs. They show themselves first when you're not alone, when you are with another person, so you can't talk yourself out of it like, oh, that was just, uh, hmm, my mind is uh, spinning, maybe I'm crazy, I didn't see that, was it uh, maybe just a plane and I'm hallucinating, all this stuff from brain and ego. And that was very, um, very interesting the first two times. I was um, outside, I'm still smoking, and I was having a cigarette with another person on the porch of someone. And um, suddenly the other person looked up and said, Well, there's a dot, an orange dot, and it's moving. Stars shouldn't move. And I looked up where she pointed at and I saw the orange dot moving in a straight line. And I was thinking, well, can't be a plane because it's missing the lights left and right. And as if it is answering my thoughts, it made a 90 degree turn to show, no, I'm not a plane. So I got that and I liked that and I was happy and had a very good feeling. My heart was jumping with joy and then it just faded out. And the second time I um, again was with another person but we had just um, finished making music with some other friends like drumming, singing, toning and we were very happy like children jumping with joy and about to leave uh, the friend's house and uh, finish that musical event for ourselves and having a last cigarette on the street before we get into the cars back home. And we were smoking and suddenly my girlfriend looked up into the sky and there was a beaming white light, but it was beaming very, very slowly. And she said, can you see that? Is that a UFO? And I looked up and I saw it and I knew instantly, well, this is our family somehow because I felt the joy and the love and um, we were in an extremely good and high state after enjoying making music. So I just said, yeah, that's them. And as if they are answering, they uh, flashed up again several times and then they just disappeared. And my third sighting was half a year ago in the end of summer 2022 and I was on my porch smoking my last cigarette for the evening late at night and I looked up in the sky and I had the wish in my heart oh I would love to see you again if you can come by and just give me a little sign and really I saw shortly after thinking that and wishing for them to show up I saw a dot a white dot like a star moving in a straight line across my house. And when I discovered them, my heart was jumping with joy. And I said, oh, it's you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. And they lit up several times. And after that, they vanished. So I'm used to that telepathic communication. And of course, after that, uh, a lot of other things happened. I'm also like, I also like very much to experiment with um, tools and techniques. And at the moment I'm training a bit uh, out of body experience. And since then, uh, since I started that in the last three months of this year, 20, Oh, it's already 2023, I mean the rest of 2022. I was astrally with my projected consciousness various times on ships and they showed me some things and uh, I got some information. 
and also experienced some, let's call it, uh, attacks by some not so friendly energies and they're always after the light uh, souls who are radiating or beaming and they try to uh, trick you into something false or um, they try to create fear and my mediumship is a good basis to handle that so I'm quite um, quite open for good benefiting contact and it's happening and I have a lot of stories that I experienced but so much for that this is about um, the the craft the seeing of a real craft in the sky or first contact and of course my first contact not wasn't uh, the thing I saw in the sky or the telepathic communication at the public dam. When I started thinking about it, I found a lot of things in my past, even as a child. My first memory was three years old. I'm looking around in my family and thinking, what am I doing here with these people? So I clearly knew I'm not from here. I come from somewhere else. But it was difficult to find that truth and accept it. Um, and it took me quite some time. I'm 66 now and I think, okay, the basis is there and now we can go on. So if you're interested in more, I got some interesting stories. But so much for that. Thank you very much and bye. I have a personal experience that sparked my interest in UFOs. I'll talk about it. So when I was a young kid, maybe third, fourth grade, I saw my dad watching a show about UFOs, aliens on TV. I saw it froze in my tracks. I was scared, scared the lights out of me. Now, later on, uh, I get, you know, I'm, I start to get really bad insomnia. I'm not sleeping well in second, third, fourth grade. I'm constantly scared something is coming in my room. One night I wake up, I look over and I see what I think is a little man with a big head. Now I get up, I turn around, I have a TV right by my bed. It's an old tube TV. I press it, it goes lights up slowly. I look over nothing there. Now, could that have been my imagination? Of course. I, I, I was a third grade kid with an active imagination. May have been nothing. But either way, I, I was scared. Now, when I was a teenager, I'm sitting in my bedroom. I have a bedroom in the basement of my dad's house. It has a window up on the ceiling, right? Up, up high, just a little window on the wall sitting there watching TV, minding my own business. I see a light flood the entire room, a bright white light. Now this is, this is my entire basement it gets filled with light. It's huge. I'm like, what, what could this possibly be? I get up, I look out the window, there's nothing out there, just a field. Nobody's out there. There's no cars. Get up, I run upstairs. I look outside. Again, nothing. Now, was that a UFO? Was that aliens? I can't say for sure. I don't know. Maybe somebody was playing a prank on me and shining a giant spotlight in my window. Possibly. I don't know. It did spark my interest. I don't know what it is. I would like to learn more. I'd like to get some extra. I didn't want to go public without evidence because I knew no one would believe me. The entire incident happened about five to six minutes in total and my mom shouts really loud oh my god what is that what is that at no point did the two men in black or the air force gentleman ask my mother or her friends what did they see they looked human but they did weird things the men in black they said you will report it as a helicopter crash or 
we will take your son away. The men in black play the narrative and the media outlets skew it back out. This was 1991 Project Mockingbird in full effect. join the YouTube membership for my channel. You will get exclusive badges, really awesome emojis, member only live streams, posts and chats and connections with me for only $5.99 a month. See you there. Hey everyone, check out the Order of Light merchandise store. We got a lot of different t-shirts there. The humans aren't real. Lower Always Creek incident. We got tank tops, the Merkaba. We got stickers, glasses, a lot of different glasses. So get thirsty. We got bags. I live in New Jersey. We don't have bags anymore. So it's really nice. We got flip-flops, hoodies, and all the ladies out there. We got a bunch of awesome merchandise for you.